Brad Gray has uh, sorted through all the form for Randwick today and kindly joins us on TPL as well. How are things shaping up uh, in Sydney today? Brad, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you, Jason. We've had a little track upgrade this morning, so we're into a, a soft range after a heavy overnight, so that's always a good sign. Uh, the, the track should play nice and fair. I think I think a lot of people assume wet track ran, we can get off the fence, but recent history probably suggests there's going to be a nice fair deck uh, until we see otherwise. I will certainly be treating it that way, but a couple of group ones, really open races, so you've got the Randwick Guineas and, of course, the Canterbury Stakes. So, Craig Day's racing and can't wait to get stuck in. Yeah, OK, let's uh, pick your form range. So starting with the Canterbury Stakes, uh, Group 1 race over 1,300 metres, 70, Arno 250, standout 270. Now, I would have thought the standout would have been favourite here, but a, a real a strength in the market for Savatiano. What's your read? Yeah, it's a fascinating little race, isn't it? It's not quite that aggressively uh, priced in terms of Savatiano over in the Australian market. We've got Savatiano $3 and standout $2.70. So whether that swaps over in the next couple of minutes, I'm not too sure. But this is the replay of standout first up, and I'm in agreement with you. Uh, he was absolutely outstanding first up in the expressway, covered a bit of ground. Uh, but Tommy Berry did say afterwards that he's a momentum horse, and it was pretty much by design, keeping him out of trouble, letting him roll into the race. And you can see there he holds a lise quite comfortably at the finish. It's been kept nice and fresh since this win. Uh, tick over trial, and the tick over trial is absolutely outstanding. Truck to the line, looks to be absolutely flying. We've got no real lead on, on whether he'll handle a wet track. I think the soft certainly helps as opposed to the heavy. He's won four from five. In saying that, uh, his full sister overreach did win a golden slipper on a soft seven surface. So hopefully that's some indication that he will handle it because I think that's all he has to do to win again. A really smart colt. Plenty of respect for Savatiano. She's, of course, come back in really good order. She's always had the ability. Now she's just got to string a couple together. And we saw her win at the back end at Newcastle. Last prep was outstanding. She resumed with a dominant win, albeit... Yeah, pretty much a sit and sprint affair in the Millie Fox the chef suggests that she's ready to take this next step but Dan for me uh, I think he's a, a nice gambler of the odds and I can get him a little bit shorter than what he is The Bostonian in New Zealand uh, Brad is shortened from 12 into $8.50 how does his form slot in? Yeah he's a tricky one to, to line up here his fresh form is incredible isn't he he's on fire from six he handles the wet I uh, don't want to underestimate him I thought $12 was probably a little bit over he's probably found about his mark now, but he's the type of horse you can never underestimate. And I got my fingers burnt last weekend taking the Kiwis on with Tiago Shark and Paul Bale, so I'm not ruling out anything anymore. <laughs> 24 hours of ice, I heard those fingers, uh, just, to, just to cool them <laughs> off after getting burnt by the uh, Kiwis Probabil and the Tiago Shark. OK, the Randwick Guineas, this an intriguing race over 1,600 metres. I'm not sure how this will be run. You've got the high-class horses that you think he'll be settling midfield and back. Yeah, what, what are your views on this race? Yeah, it was pretty much carbon copy of the Hobartville field. Uh, the majority of runners come out of that. And going into that race, there was a real concern around the lack of speed, and that's the way it played out. The first four turning for home, as you can see in this replay here, this is the Hobartville, we're the first four home. So whether something decides, well, I've had enough of this and decides to take this field on a little bit, uh, a little bit aggressive, I'm not too sure, but I don't think there's going to be a... Another heftic tempo. The holy one is potentially the one out of the hover that will could flip his form. He's generally a front runner, but in this race he missed the kick and, and couldn't muster and he was OK at the finish. So there's some chance of running an improved race, but I am with the, the staying form pretty much. Shadow Hero, a uh, little query on a wet track for him. The drier the surface, the better, but his second up win in the gloaming last campaign was an absolute beauty. He bolted in. Hope he can sit a little bit closer from the draw. He's drawn four, which is a nice draw for him. Him and Castelvecchio, there's generally not much between them, but I think it's it's very interesting that Shadow Hero does hold a 3 nil record when they have met, and Castelvecchio is the one that's going to have to go right back from the draw. That pretty much dictates where he'll be on the map. So, happy to give Shadow Hero the chance here. I thought he was okay there in the Hobart, but hitting the line late, suggested a mild suit. So, outside of that, Brandenburg is the one that's been overlooked again, pretty much. He's $8. I know he won the the Hobart Bill at $41, but geez, it's easy to ignore the obvious. And he was on the set outside the lead. I imagine he finds a similar spot here. And he was first up, so he can only improve off that. So keep him safe. But I am with Shadow here in the, the five. Brad, can you summarise your best bets for us? Yeah, sure. Best bet for me comes up in the first. First crack at the track for Seeker. Uh, she's a lovely mare. This a four year old for Joe Pride. We so often see with this stable that they're very patient and get the best out of them. So I think she'll eventually turn herself into a Group 1 mare. 
We'll just follow her through the grade. She kicks off today and could end up being bigger and better things at the end of the carnival than the others. Race four, Cosmic Force. This is the fireball. It's been knocked around a little bit by scratchings, but he's a pretty classy horse. This bloke, 1,100 metres first up wet track, right up his alley, and stand out uh, in race five for all the reasons we mentioned earlier. Excellent. Uh, Brad, we thank you very much for your time and all the best with the three bets that you've given our TPL viewers.